The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. You need to spread the gospel. The gospel is a seed that gives birth to the church. So I'll be discussing about the gospel. I'll be discussing about the gospel. Let's start from Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And I'll take verse 14. What I'll be doing is to be going into scripture. So get your Bibles close to you and let us go together. Matthew 24, I'll be reading from the NIV, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Let me take it again. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus teaches on the signs of the end time. He makes a sobering statement when he said that in the last days evil will abound to the extent that the love of many will grow cold. But in the midst of the increase of evil, he said the gospel ought to be preached. It ought to be preached for one purpose. I'm sure that he desires that people will be saved. But he didn't talk about that. He says that for a testimony. For evidence to support the proof that nobody will go to hell and say, I didn't hear the gospel. So the gospel must be preached to all the ends of the world in the midst of the increasing evil as a proof that the person who went to hell didn't go to hell because nobody told him. He didn't go to hell because he never heard the gospel. That he went to hell, he heard the gospel, but he did not accept Jesus as Lord. That would be a testimony that he cannot blame God for being in hell. And this is a responsibility that I want to leave with you tonight. I'll talk or open up the gospel. And then I want to say that I'll dwell extensively on the redemption story. And I'll conclude that the gospel must be presented in power and in agency. Now, let me say this. Please pay attention to this statement. The fact that God is love does not mean that he tolerates sin. Now hold that closely to your chest. If you want this church to grow and to spread, those of us who are pastors and leaders, punish sin when you see it. Yeah, punish it. When you see that this is a sin, punish it. Don't say that it is a person's own business. For in the body of Christ, the hand cannot say that it is my own business. I've never seen any hand admitted in the hospital, leaving the head and the legs at home. Every one of us is part of the body. And as long as we encourage sin, we check out the Holy Spirit. Now the fact that God is love does not mean that he tolerates evil. The forgiveness of our sins actually cost God his only begotten son. There is no one on earth who will be forgiven of sins or be remitted of his sins without acknowledging Jesus as Lord. That is how expensive forgiveness is. That is how expensive forgiveness is. 1 John chapter 2 verse 2 says this. 1 John 2 2. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now you can imagine John speaking to Christians. He writes to those who are born again. 
And so he says that he, Jesus, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. What does this mean in practice? Romans chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Romans 3, 23, 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is a very popular test. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now 24. For all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Now whilst verse 23 is saying that all have sinned, verse 24 is saying that all are justified freely. So how can all sin and all be justified freely? So there is a missing link. There's a gap that needs to be filled. So the following verses try to supply the missing link. Now, so let's pay attention to 25. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his, that is God's righteousness, because in his forbearance, he has left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Verse 26. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that as to be just and the one who justified those who have faith in Jesus. Now, this is a very important scripture. I want to dwell on it for a moment. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But all have been justified through the redemption that came through Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Now verse 25 is trying to supply the gap. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood. So God presented Christ so he would shed his blood and that would atone for mankind so that man would then receive that atonement by faith. Then he says that God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, when we are talking about forbearance, we are saying that abstaining from the enforcement of a right. You see, the soul that sinner should die. Evil needs to be punished. But God's forbearance. Now God is trying to abstain from enforcement of the law. What should happen to the sinner? Now in trying to forbear, he makes some demonstration. And then he says that he demonstrated this so to appease his own righteousness. He did it for his own righteousness. Now what does that mean? And the Bible says that God presented Christ. God brought before the whole world or God introduced Christ to the whole world. That is what it means to present. Introduce him to the whole world. Introduce him publicly to all human beings. God did that introduction. And the Bible says that that one is for God's own righteousness. So that he will be found as just. Now let me say this. See, God is a just God. And he wants the whole world to know that he's a just God. Why did he need to prove to the world that he's just? Why the demonstration? By bringing his son unto the whole world for us to receive him by faith. God has attributes. Whilst the love of God wants the sinner to come to him, the holiness of God cannot just take that. Now, listen to this very well. 
while the faithfulness of God is demanding that the sinner be punished for his sins, the mercy of God is calling for pardon. Now, so look at that. So in his forbearance, in his wisdom, he decided to do something. To present Christ to mankind so that man will receive Christ by faith through the shedding of his blood. So that once you accept Jesus by faith, by what God has presented, his blood then cleanses you. Then holiness and faithfulness will not have any issue with you. But apart from that, the holiness of God will resist the sinner. Even though the love of God wants to pull the sinner. So in his forbearance, God then gives out Christ to be received by faith. So if you don't receive him and his holiness check you out, you can't blame him. So the Bible says that he did that for his own righteousness sake. So that you'll be seen as just. You'll be seen as just. Now, Romans 3. Let's go to 21 and come back to 22. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophet testify. Now, God is going to set aside the law and introduce a new righteousness. 22. This is very important. Shall we read together if you can? This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. This new righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ. To how many people? Who believe. It is to all, but who believe. Now once you believe, whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, an Indian or Ghanaian, it doesn't really matter. Once you believe in Christ, now the new righteousness of God, through Jesus Christ, then accommodates you and gives you eternal life. Have I communicated? Fine. This is how God packaged the redemption story. And he backed it up with an oath. See, the oath is supposed to settle all arguments. See, sometimes you see people who belong to other religions saying that all religions lead to God. But Christianity is an exclusive religion. We don't say that. We don't say that. We don't. Because our master says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we believe that. We don't say that because we believe in scripture that the redemption of man, the way God has packaged the redemption, he has backed it with oath. And the oath settles all arguments. So the fact that this guru can lead you to heaven, let them say it. But God knew, even beforehand, that there were going to be many gurus. People who claim to be the, the redeemers and the saviors. They will claim all sort of things. But in order not to confuse mankind, God settled on Christ. And he did that on oath. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 16. Hebrews 6 verse 16. People swear by someone greater than themselves. Is that true? Yes. And the oath confirms what is said and put an end to all arguments. Put an end to all arguments. The next verse. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heir of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. Verse 18. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, comma, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. 
So that when you have accepted Jesus as Lord, your anchor should hold. Your anchor should hold that you have really been born again. So that you wouldn't have any doubt in your mind. God declared that Christ is Lord. God declared that Christ is the way. And he did that on oath. This is what the scripture is saying.